Yo, yo. Did you see me? Yes. I was looking up your Rams uh, preseason just to see if <laughs> you guys have played. I see, I see you guys beat the Cowboys by one. It Did was I... the Cowboys. That's not an impressive one. It's really not, but. <laughs> hey, I'm honest about it, <laughs> but I do think that we'll be, we're in a better situation as a team. So I do think that based on the schedule, we could go 12 and five. Uh, I didn't really look at your uh, full schedule, so let's take a look while we're here. So, first game of the season, huh? The Lions. Uh, up until the bye, it could look really, really ugly. Yeah, you got a tough one. For the first five games. I'd if say we your go first four two, games, you might go 0-4, man. You might go 0-4. 0-4? That no way. There's no. I'm calling no Lions shot. upset, Cardinals upset. Actually, it's, it's not even a Lions upset. That's just the this Lions should just win outright. Cardinals no upset, shot. Niners. Come on, Niners are going to beat you. And then the Bears. Yeah, they now, probably will. Just they because probably, the, just the because Niners you said my Jags are going to lose to the Bears. of our existence. Just because you said my Jags are going to lose to the Bears, I'm going to have to say, you know what? Maybe the Rams are going to lose to the Bears, too. <laughs> You're right. I, I, going up into the bye, which is uh, for us week six, I mean, if we go three and two, uh, that's a pretty good deal. Yeah. Based on I mean, those you got five the Packers, teams. too, after that. That's. Yeah. Uh, I think you can beat the Raiders. Yeah. I think we can beat the Vikings too. That's a winnable one. Yeah. And the Seahawks. We'll see. I think you're in the same same boat as me. No way. <laughs> I think we'll go. I think we'll go 12 and 5. We could go 10 and 7, but I think we'll go 12 and 5. And what that's see. counting both losses to the Niners. You think you'll lose to them twice? I think that if there's a team that can beat us, it's the Niners, and I hate playing them in the playoffs because as much as I hate admitting it, they they love to play us extra hard. Yeah, it's always a good game. I'll never forget that one, what, was it four or five years ago where it was like Super Bowl run? 50 something. It was just a, a crazy oh, game. The it was Molly storm, yeah, storm, we don't talk about the Molly Scoring back and forth. I think it's when you guys had Todd Gurley still. It was yeah, going. we don't we don't talk about that. That was a wild game, but uh, <laughs> but yeah. So I don't. We don't want to bore our participants with our football talk. No, no. Just no, so no. you guys know, though, just if you're interested, Jose is a diehard Rams fan. Yep. Actually, I, I don't remember if you ever told me how you became a Rams fan, but uh, uh, uh Dad was mil the TLDR. Dad was military. We were stationed in Arizona, and um, he was like, "Hey, I don't want you flopping, so pick a team." So I been <laughs> playing the Rams. Okay, Rams are cooler than Cardinals. That's fair. That's fair. I can accept that. And then I jumped on at the right time because then when we moved to Florida, it was ninety five, and they were starting. They had. They were still in LA. Then they moved to. St. Louis, and then the greatest show on turf happened. So it was yeah. it was a pretty good time to jump on. And That's then fair. we went through the dark ages. Then we went through the dark ages that we don't talk about, you know, where wow. we were we were circling the toilet train like the Browns fans and Lions fans and Jets. The Jets were actually decent then, so I that's only how far back I think it as was. A Jags fan, I've always been in the dark ages, so. It's okay. That's not true. Bortles <laughs> took Bortles took you to AFC Champ. Oh, okay, despite 2017, we that was that was when he got us out of the dark ages for one season, <laughs> 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 which was worth all the seasons. Honestly, that was a, that was a time time to be alive right there. I had season tickets. And, and it was just yeah, that was a fun year. But uh, anyways, oh man, but, uh, no, what, so. Yeah, so uh, no, I appreciate Today everybody. Let's do some uh, recaps. Yeah, appreciate everybody joining uh, today's uh, Tuesday session. Uh, my name is Ray Walters. Uh, we'll be your, your host for today. And I'm also joined by my co-host, Jose Jr., uh, who has uh, 17 years plus experience in the healthcare consulting uh, side of things, as well as he owns a mental telehealth uh, practice. 
And uh, yeah, we're sort of just, I want to say we're taking a break. We've been doing these every Tuesday and we, we, nah, we it's continue, not a break. To, continue to do so. But the topic that we're going to be discussing today, we're sort of revisiting some previous webinars we've done. I'm going to post them in the chat for you guys that may have not attended these webinars, but there's been some big what's the word jose some big uh, breaches. uh cybersecurity breaches this year one would change healthcare which is a huge conglomerate of united health and uh, uh some of you that might be in this uh webinar may have been affected by that breach to some extent and then there was also a recent uh breach with ascension health um so yep. we did we did cover a couple webinars in the past on those i'm going to provide some links over in chat but we wanted to sort of recap and uh you know obviously where things have gone since both of those hacks were to occur and then uh also we we're going to touch a little bit on another recent i guess it was it a it's not really a hack jose so um, it's 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 a, but it's, it's a, along the same lines right so yeah. it's not a breach technically it was an oopsie and it was a rather large oopsie from crowdstrike yep yep so we'll we're gonna we're gonna look into that a little bit and then um the basic difference the tldr we've only got five minutes is <laughs> the difference between the breaches versus crowdstrike is that two of the three of those had malicious intent behind it mm -hmm. and had external factors affecting businesses. Crowd, the CrowdStrike situation was a bad patch that did not flow well with um, Microsoft products. So if you were a, or, or a CrowdStrike, a CrowdStrike client, it's something to where it was like, half of the Forbes top 500 companies use CloudStrike. And I mean, airports were shot down. I know Amazon uh, was down or so most of their systems. I have a friend that works for the real estate department. He couldn't use some sort of software that he was trying yeah. to get access to. I mean, it was giving you uh blue screen to death for yeah. some people. So, I mean, that's a problem when you're running a hospital. That's a problem when you're flying an airplane. So that's, it was, it was rather interesting how that stuff kind of happened, but that was more um, a boo-boo on the tech side, lack of testing. But again, the one similarity with all of that is the human element was involved, right? Like somebody somewhere wasn't paying attention to what they were bloody doing. So when we look at the updates on the change healthcare, um, the big one that we have, if you didn't hear about it, was the cause was the Alpha Network Group or had those the hackers that were involved that claimed responsibility for it were able to get in due to one of the major servers for change not having multi-factor authentication. So they were able to use old employee ex-employee login credentials and they were in there for nine whole days mm -hmm. nine whole days without anybody knowing that they were there i mean it's i don't loud. know if, I, ray i don't know if you've ever fired somebody and seen the damage that a, that someone who's pissed off that they got fired could do in 30 seconds 30 se <laughs> 45 <laughs> seconds I'm nine, say nine days. days that's man. are you kidding me that's 60% of a payroll cycle. Yep. Yep. The damage that they were able to do with nine days of damage, I'm shocked they only were able to do that. I'm kind of insulted by, uh, you know, it, it kind of tells me that they weren't that good. <laughs> you had nine days. You had nine days. Nobody even knew you were there. <laughs> but um the board during the q2 core uh the q2 call earnings call because yeah. change is part of united and since they are on the um stock exchange there are more conversations that happen because this affects earnings this affects I say, the, per bi the biggest thing with change right was uh you know e-clinical works and emr software is down billing uh, systems were down it, it it affected quite a few it, what, it affected the whole ecosystem. Of, did it did 
And because uh, even my practice, even though it wasn't affected by it, if a patient was using a pharmacy benefit manager from a specific company or a specific insurance and they had no access to their information, they couldn't approve the formulary. They couldn't approve the uh, prior off. Right. So it affected it affected not just the patients that were directly involved, but it, it you could feel the ripples throughout the entire ecosystem. But we're getting a lot more information out of this company than we normally do, especially for larger organizations, because they are publicly owned. So, for example, right. uh, when this first happened, um, forecasters are saying, oh, it's going to cost them about a billion dollars with a B. During the say the Q2 earnings call, they said that no, no, not a billion. We undershot it. It's closer to 2.3 billion dollars. I mean, a billion. third of the patient health population was affected by this, in from the, what I've read. Yeah, I mean, in the yeah. US. I mean, it's it's wild. So, I mean, when you're looking at 2.3 billion dollars, that means that. This is their forecast, mind you. Mm -hmm. This is without the lawsuits. This is without any of the, um, how can I put this, civil penalties that the federal government is going to impose because of the breach. This is without in, uh, including the forgiveness of the loans that they gave out to the practices under United and under Change. Um, and some of the ACOs did like mm -hmm. that reimbursements and all that stuff. Those loans, I I highly, highly, highly predict that if you needed if you needed and got a forward um, a loan as they're putting it for IRS purposes and books purposes, they're just gonna forgive that straight out. They're gonna forgive it straight out. Like I have no doubt in my mind. And if I don't they see don't, it. if they don't, it's another class action. Yeah, now, absolutely. mind you, they may try to sneak and they may may try to, you know, sneak you a Mickey and say, hey, we'll forgive the loan if you sign this piece of paper holding us not harmful for this. I could see that. And then you have to go and just decide, OK, well, do I sue you or for the breach or do I take the loan and just walk away? Right, because. What would you do? You got to imagine on that kind of a scenario, <laughs> let's say that um, this only affected me in a small scope. So I only had to deal with, you know, my United patients. OK, maybe that's 10, 15 percent of my patient population. All right. Let's say I was in the EHR world that if this was my uh, my my system. This was my uh, exchange. The exchange was my was my um, intermediary. Mm -hmm. Your hose, that's 100%, 90%. You know, like the only thing that wasn't was anything that's cash. So if you're an 85, 80, you're an 80, 90% insurance, you're sitting here like, <laughs> Bobo, <laughs> unless oh, yeah. that number that I got from you was like a quarter million dollars, you're getting sued. Oh no! You know, like Absolutely. I'll take. You know what? I'll even add that to my damages. And if they're stupid enough to put, and if they're stupid enough, which I, if I do recall, they did do for anybody putting on those, uh, anybody that got those loans from Change or United directly, they put on. They actually put on a percentage of interest. So if they put on a percentage of interest, you better add that into the into the uh, damages. No, absolutely. You have to. So, I mean, yeah. So, I mean, so, like, if you're sitting here. You did, I mean, a, you did an interview with uh, Don with not Dawn. too long ago who they use, uh, what, they use eClinical Works, correct? Mm -hmm. Did they take they a loan? They use eClinical. And they... eClinical had the stones to be like, hey, I know that this happened because we only use one, we only use one, um, uh, one exchange and, you know, change healthcare. But we still need you to pay for the EHR access, even though if you can't get any money out of this. <laughs> wow, that's a great customer service. <laughs> oh, it's all good lord. But again, it's something to where they're getting hosed on it. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like they're getting hosed on the customer service side. They still have that's... the cost of running the thing. Like I get why they still charged it. It just looks bad. It looks uh, real. It just looks real. bad because it comes back to the practice. 
It's the one the practice yeah, limitations are the ones that take the brunt of it, you know. Absolutely. Well, I mean, the the practice took it on both sides, right? Yeah. The practice took it on the on the breach side where, hey, I have an EHR, but um, it's essentially a filing cabinet because I can't do anything with it. I can't right. send out any claims. I can't get any information. I can't send prior offs. I mean, what do I do? Or, or, I mean, it's a filing. And then you cabinet. got the patient on the other end. What's going on? You know, where's my meds? Where's, where's my, my meds? meds? Yeah, yeah. I mean, that one's the, you know, like if you and if you're in an environment where the patient could have adverse effects, I mean. Now you're trying to work with the pharmacies and be like, bro, you got to help me help you. You know, like, yeah. can we go to here in Florida? We call it the hurricane protocols. Like, hey, I've got a pad of prescription paper with all my information on it for my providers. They're going to write the paper script and they're going to take it to you because that's all that we that's all that we can do. And the pharmacies are like, well, I can't even take a look at this stuff because my system's down because of the whole change thing, too. Because a lot of these insurances force you to go to certain pharmacies because that's how they control the price, right? So, right. I mean, that one was a whole mess. But we're getting more information more honestly because of the fact that they're part of United and United has to answer to the shareholders and shareholders are pissed. They're uh, pissed because a, a portion of them, I guarantee you, are providers, or hospital yeah, systems, and they yep. got hosed personally. And then on the other side of it, they're like, well, you idiots. How did this happen? Ooh, this is going to screw up my dividends. This is going to screw up the, sh uh, the share price. You know, so I'm waiting to see who's going to be the, the head that's going to roll for this. Because there has to be somebody. Somebody, so this is going to land on somebody's desk. I feel bad for that poor soul because they're going to be attached to this forever. Who do you think that, that person may end up being within the organization? Um, CEO? <laughs> if, so if I'm, head of, head of if IT? I'm tactical, right? So if I'm political or if I'm tactical, United is going to shift every and all blame to change. And they're going to try to distance themselves and say, hey, we just bought the company. This happened under their watch. Somebody from there has got to go. Okay, cool. Congress wants United Healthcare's CEO's head because he's the name that everybody knows. It's an easy head for it's it, it's an easy win for Congress if they can get that head to roll. United CEO is going to try to push that off the change, just like the rest of United is as an organization, and say, "Hey, no, 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 this is change's fault. We're going to handle it." And I would say easily the chief. IT officer for change is gone. It's gone. Yeah. Um, makes you could makes see sense. something where if there's, I mean, you could see something tactically where and politically where if this is, if there were any holdovers from when change was bought by United, all of them are on the chopping block. No, absolutely. Because you mean to tell me that you guys didn't know what was going on, and they probably didn't. They probably didn't. Tell me I mean, nine, they went nine in. days and they didn't know. <laughs> I mean, but I, you think a C-suite, anybody is going to know what the hell is happening in the trenches? No. Nah. Do you know what I mean? Like, it's it's a it's absolutely a move to where somebody's head has to has to be offered up. It'll probably be the chief security officer or the chief IT officer, and they may take a couple people down with them just because right um we'll see how that one goes now keep in mind this was and technically if i'm if i wanted to be an auditor about this this is on hr yeah they didn't close because out how that, are uh, old credentials yeah allowed into a system and regardless of whether that system had multi-factor authentication or not you know what i mean like Probably didn't. Never should have happened. Probably the old didn't. credentials never should have been working. Um, this is straight up like, let's be a nerd about this. This is straight up Star Wars, Return of the Jedi. Hey, they're old credentials, but they're good. Let's just let them down. You know what I mean? like, <laughs> this is blowing up the second Death Star here. All right, guys. Um, yeah. So, and if you guys aren't nerds, you're you're probably like this guy's 
idiot, but if you got it, you got it. Um, so when it comes to the Ascension one, the Ascension one is one where everybody's up, back up and running. There's a rumor that I've heard that the number for the ransom was in the was in the, uh, the tens of millions. I have no way of verifying. I have no information of the matter. All I know is it's in the tens of millions. And according to a couple of uh, studies that I've seen recently, if a hospital or insurance gets hosed and on a ransomware attack, it's usually in the 10 million just to get their shit back. So for the Ascension, though, I, I, and correct me if I'm wrong, there was only... There's how many Ascension related organizations? There's about fifty of them, or something. Oh my god! Were they all um, affected? So I can't. They were all affected in varying degrees. Right, right. So the problem is that Ascension St. Vincent has, and again, for us in Northeast Florida, Ray Ascension is also with St. Vincent, right? Correct. But Ascension has a partnership with the University of Alabama, Birmingham, and Alabama. They have they have partnerships in thirteen states. Right, right. They go all the way out west to Arkansas, um, Louisiana, um, Missouri, all the way out there. So, I mean, you're going all up and down the um, the SEC, more or less. I mean, I think they it's Florida, Bama, Mississippi, Louisiana, up through Kentucky, Illinois, Iowa, Arkansas, that whole stretch right through there. Um, they're in 13 some odd states and all they run is hospital systems. Gotcha. Gotcha. So the amount of lives affected by something like that, I mean, that one's an interesting one to me because the way that they're claiming the, the hackers got in was an employee accessed an email they weren't supposed to access and that's how they got in and they just got through everywhere. Problem number it's gotta one. Got to be something. Well, more problem number one. Why was that person's AOL dot com email even allowed to open on a company device? Problem number two. Why did employee not know not to do that? Problem number three. Common sense. I would love to know what level of remember because remember in HIPAA security your level of access needs to be completely catered to your job responsibilities if this person let's just say for example they were working out of one of the Jacksonville hospitals mm -hmm. what system would they have access to that would require them to also have access to the same system that would affect 12 other states they're in we're talking like super. You know admin. I mean, like if super I'm, admin if, privileges, if, right there. Well, you I know? mean, but so then it's somebody that definitely should know better, right? Right? You no, know? absolutely. Let's say, let's say that it was they they got in through the e they got into the EHR because of a bad email, right? Okay, cool. The EHRs at that level in when you're working with a hospital, they don't they don't grab an all scripts off the shelf. You know, they don't grab an e-clinicals and Athena Health. They don't grab them off the shelf. They buy them for cheap, usually hosing the providers in the area that have administrative rights and the ad um rights in the hospital. Uh usually they're ho they hose the providers and they say, Hey, uh, let's you know what? Let's name drop. I don't mind name dropping. Uh Flagler Hospital here in St. John's County, Florida. The way that they got all scripts for dirt cheap was that they went in with the St. John's County Medical Society right. and the ACO back in 2009 and hosed all of the providers that wanted anything to do with Flagler. So how did they do that? They forced every single office to jump onto all scripts at their own dollar, regardless of whether they had an EHR or not already. If you wanted to work with Flagler, you had to get all scripts in. That's it. End of discussion. Well, all these. No. So the all scripts rep for this area made a stupid, stupid uh, amount of money. Can only imagine. The hospital ends up getting all scripts for dirt cheap in and of itself because they brought all of this all money these people. to yeah. all scripts. 
So then they could afford then to customize it to the way that they want, right. which is usually how that all works. Right. Right. Because once you're a hospital and you're dealing with multiple things, an out of the box solution and out of, I mean, an off the shelf of solution isn't going to work. You need to customize, you know? So uh, they, there was definitely some customization involved there. So I say all that to say, like, come on, guys, we should know better. If you're running the same EHR and you've done all this customization and you know by law that there is not one job title mm -hmm. that you can tell me that would need access to patient health information for every single patient in every single hospital over 13 states. Not one provider. Not so nobody, one technical no, officer. Nobody's been singled out yet, correct? They nobody's haven't. been singled out for that much. And I doubt that there will ever be somebody singled out because of the different moves that Ascension is doing anyways. Ascension right now is consolidating and selling off different pieces of different of the of the That's empire. Right. That's right. So, they're, so like the Alabama, they're selling off all the Alabama hospitals, the UA, UAB. Um, that one should be done here shortly. So I was going to say, this didn't affect, affect that deal. <laughs> no, I, I mean, no? if I'm if I'm UAB, I'm definitely saying, yo, I got to fix this mess. And I was going to say fire there, sale. But, <laughs> well, but the problem too with the UAB deal, right, was UAB was already part of the deal. They were already they were already partnered with Ascension. Right. So like here in, Saint, in in Northeast Florida, it's St. Vincent's and Ascension over there. It's UAB and Ascension. You see what gotcha. I'm saying? So yeah, they were yeah. already partners in the mess. Gotcha. Ascension is just washing their hands of it. So fine. Take it. Take the yeah. four hospitals or five hospitals in Alabama. Bye. And move on to the next one. Right. So um, and I think they're doing like two other deals like that. Um, to consolidate through but i mean it makes sense if i've got four or five hospitals in every single state that i'm in and i'm in 13 states that's what five times three that's uh 15. 52 no 65 sorry five times 13 65 uh right? I I don't know why. I thought you said five times three. I'm like, uh, Jose, where are you getting this number? No, no, no. I mean, so, I mean, you're looking at 60 some odd hospitals. There's not one person. There's not one department that has, that should have access to every single hospital. Right. Right. Like, even if I'm the chief IT person for all of Ascension, there's no way I'm handling 13 states. I probably have an IT manager for each individual state and then i probably have two or three guys under him for each individual hospital, hospital. Yeah. and then the hub because you know they have a server because they have to have a server just for storage purposes for all that data no absolutely right so i mean you're looking at you're looking at an it infrastructure that there's no reason why this should have been that much of an issue this should have been a localized issue and they're going to get dinged for it because there's no excuse. So they're going to get dinged. I, in my, in my professional opinion, they're going to get dinged for one <laughs> dumb, dumb getting into uh, opening an email that they're not supposed to open. They're going to get dinged because it affected all of their systems uh, in varying degrees. You know what I mean? Like they're going to get dinged in, they're going to get dinged in such a way that after each, that one should be a, a seven low sevens after negotiations to the a federal settlement. government. Yeah, it'll be a settlement in that respect. Now it'll just be a matter of how many patients are going to be able to sue. You know, one thing I haven't seen, but I'm curious to see is if I'm a is patient dictated right? on if they're you know the individual patients' records were affected. Yeah, well, not even that. That's an obvious one. I'm talking about. Um, for these hospitals, right, mm -hmm. that they go through a breach, right? And the reason why they're allowed to open is because they're a community hospital. So if I have a major event, the ambulance is supposed to take me to the closest freaking hospital. I don't get to choose the hospital. 
I have to go right. to the closest hospital that is to my incident, whether it's a car accident, something happens on a soccer field, you know, whatever the case may be, right? Okay. Emergency pops up. If I die in transit going to another hospital because the hospital I was supposed to go to couldn't see this patients because of a breach, I'm curious to see if there's a wrongful death lawsuit there. That is an interesting way to put it. I would say, well, right? if, because I mean, that a, I would be curious. To is see that a, let me ask you this: Is that a federal? Is that a federal law? Is that a state by state law? Because that because which part could that vary? Which part per state? The the community rules or the just having the communication to the closest hospital is that a federal or is that state? I want to say that's federal. Okay, I don't know because it, it has to do with ER procedures. Because if it if um I'm let's say let you know what let's name drop again. I'm not a big fan of Flagler Hospital for a lot of things, right? So um if I want to go to let's say the closest other hospital would be Florida um Baptist, Baptist, Baptist South. Baptist South, yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. So Flagler is 15 minutes from my house. Baptist South is 30, 30 minutes with with sirens, I think they can do 20, but that's just me playing, you know, racing games <laughs> for most of my life, right? Um, you're on that so, high. You're I mean, on 295 as well, so. <laughs> or mean, 95. Yeah, I'm you're sorry. on 95. You're 95. on 295. You know, it's 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 pretty quick. So back to South is probably like 30 minutes from my house. If I die in that extra 20 minutes, is the ER, the the ambulance isn't liable. They're they're doing the pro. They're following protocol. First ER, the closest ER to me. Right. If I died on the way to the Flagler ER, all right, you know I died on transit. But if I died on transit to Florida uh, uh, to Baptist South, would would Flagler be on the hook for something like that? I don't have the answer for that. Maybe we want to jot that down for Sam as an interesting compliance question. Um, Certainly. But that would say, I would honestly say, hey, this is, you know, the the fact of the matter is, right, and let's go back. In, this, in the U.S., we're a highly litigious culture. It doesn't even matter if the lawsuit even makes any bloody sense, right? At the end of the day, it's going to be, is it worth it to the hospital to fight it? So if my, I'll tell you right now, if something happens to my wife and she dies in transit going to an, a further ER than the one she needed to go to, then she should have gone to because of something stupid like this. Oh, you better believe I'm sending a lawsuit. And realistically, oh, yeah. they're depending on the number, they may just write the check and move the hell on. And just call it as part of the settlements that they got to pay out. You know what I mean? Like, I really don't know. I'm sure that there are some cases in different states because I can't be the I only one that thought of something like this. Yeah. That, you know what I mean? Like, just this year, there's so many hospitals that have been getting hit with so this many stuff. Hacks this year. Yeah. Yeah. There's Crazy. so many hacks this year. And the interesting part, too, that I've found is that they're not discriminating between a nonprofit versus a for profit hospital. They're really not discriminating, but we're finding out more information about the for-profit ones because of the different ways that they are responsible to other people, and... to stakeholders, to um, federal and state governments that really want to bang them over the head, right? Because they're the evil for-profit companies in healthcare and for-profit is evil, right? But the nonprofits are getting hosed with this. I mean, I just saw the CMS got hacked. Earlier this really? year, in when and, and they, so one of their one of their vendors, sorry to get off on a tangent, but one of their vendors got um got hacked, and it was in regards to hold on, let me find it. Had it up a minute ago. Um. Oh, all right. By the way, um, because this is the one that was up. Ascension has a hundred and forty hospitals. So us saying 65 was not no, we were even way off. No, we were half. Um, no, where was it? I'll find it for you. But I mean, right now, 
there the different studies I'm looking at, they're saying that if you're if you're a hospital, average cost of a data breach is ten million dollars. Right? Yeah. Medicare getting even Medicare getting hacked through one of their BAAs or, or through one of their B, uh, vendors is a problem because the whole industry has this problem. So how do we avoid it, right? You know, um, it's a lot of human element. The human element is the problem, right? Like I hate to put it this way, but the human element is the problem. Even when we look at the CrowdStrike one, which that was just a patch from the IT company that just didn't mesh well with Microsoft. So you got blue screen to death if you had Microsoft. Still a human element involved. All Still the human element because somebody had to push that through. Somebody didn't test it right. You know, like why it could have happened. It could have been a comma in the code. You know what I mean? So what can we do to avoid being that person? One, if be you decide proactive. to be the HIPAA security officer or the chief IT of any practice, look up what your liability is. You had better know where you're vulnerable you had better do an SRA, make sure that you know where you're vulnerable and have somebody actually looking into it, not just rubber stamping and saying, oh, yeah, no, you did it. Bye. No, like what Word. is going on here? You know, um, but all these major breaches are all from the same human element. It's not that the practice is doing anything wrong. Right. Like it's it's not like they're being negligent behind the wheel. We're just. In some, I, I would honestly say, in the change case, well, common sense says HR should have should have gotten rid of those uh, those credentials. those credentials, yep. and IT should have had multi factor authentication. Are you kidding me? My email, my every standard man, practice nowadays for everything, for everything, for your streaming platforms, you have multi factor authentication. I don't recognize this laptop. I don't recognize this TV. I'll recognize this phone. Here's another way. Is it a pain, pain in the butt? Yes, but it's the necessary. Yeah, exactly. Right. So that one. Okay. All right. So then two people were asleep at the wheel change. All right. Ascension. I would say that honestly, dumb, dumb that opened that email and downloaded something they weren't supposed to download, but it was asleep at the wheel. Assuming that. They had access to everything. Like, how did they get access to everything? That doesn't make any sense. Like, how can I, how? For as long as they had it for way. it, too. <laughs> well, so, yeah, I mean, so how can you do that, right? So Ascension was, was the downloading of an email, and then this one was just a patch. Okay, so how can I avoid this? If I'm a healthcare practice, how can I avoid my IT company did a patch, and that caused an issue? There's nothing you could have done. No. Nothing nothing at all but this is going to affect your practice this is going to affect your patient care and your patients don't care they're going to get mad at you because you're the one in the trenches so what do we do all right um honestly conversations with staff are huge right and it's hard to get culture right in any industry i mean there are consultants that make millions and millions of dollars they have millions and millions of views on youtube on just them talking and depending on the person you listen to it, it's conflicting information with the next guy right beside him who's just as rich just as famous just as respected right so i mean just hiring somebody off the street isn't going to work anymore and i think most people know that right so it's not just hiring the right credentials but it's also trying to hire the right culture Right. So making right. sure that everybody understands that they're part of a team, a larger organization, a larger organism. Right. And then from there, we have to have the conversation of, look, common sense is a superpower nowadays. I know that I shouldn't have to tell you this, but I'm gonna just to make sure that we're on the same page. Right. Like I shouldn't have to tell my kids, hey, don't jump from couch to couch. Why? Because they know that if they fall, they're going to get hurt. They know that if they break something, I'm going to be pissed. But I got to say it anyways, right? Doesn't mean I have a bad relationship with my kids. Doesn't mean I have a bad relationship with my employees. It just means that 
we need to be able to have honest conversations, right? Like, look, do you like your job? Do you like working? Yes. Okay, perfect. Then I need you to not stu do stupid shit. <laughs> I'm just going to need you to pay a little bit more attention to certain things. If this information looks risky to you, or it looks extremely important. I'm a human. Yeah, this stuff happens. Okay, great. Then what we need to do is get out of the clean room to then open it. Right. What would it have taken Adria. that person to take a smoke break Address and open that on their on their cell phone that hopefully is not on the on the company network? But right. that's a whole nother bag of tricks, right? Like right. so it's not it's this isn't a situation where I want to come down and just be like, hey, no, this everything needs to be locked down. No, we need to have empathy for our employees, but they need to have empathy for the organization. If you screw this up, do you know what happens down the line? Uh, it affects everybody. Probably not, right? Yeah, because they're not the one that right now, I mean, my, my front desk person is not going to be someone that is going to see handcuffs from from hhs for this their career is not going to be ruined their livelihood is their livelihood could be ruined because the practice could close right like that that's the biggest thing here so i mean we just need to have a conversation and just be like look guys you having one slip on this end causes this 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 you may not see it, but you downloading that email caused not just an uncountable amount of lives to be in jeopardy, more than what they already were for their own circumstances, but the organization is going to have a stupid amount of fines, which completely affects your livelihood, even if I don't find out if you did it. Right? Like, yeah. I don't have to find out you did it for your job to be on the, on the hook. You could be the newest person in the department. Hey, I've seen it a hundred times. Oh, well, guess what? We got fines. We got just Medicare clawbacks. Hey, we're going down to Medicare prepayment review, 50%. That's going to affect our uh, revenue cycle. Therefore, I have to fire two people today. And this could be a practice of 15 Two people, that's right. more than 10%. You know what I mean? Like in a large hospital, lo losing 5 to 7% of your staff over 140 hospitals, ain't nothing. Yeah. Change, and now granted, Change and United are going to be able to move that money around in 10 different ways and be like, oh, well, you know, just because their accounting and the amount of monies that they're looking at is stupid. But even $2 billion is going to hurt. Well, you know what I mean? Like from a and the crazy part is United has this giant umbrella, but one company is going to lose them too. A billion, not to mention that it affected the revenue cycles for all of the other companies in the umbrella. Yeah. Right. So it's something to where if we want to do better as an industry, we have to do better as people. We have to be able, and it sucks. It does suck because we are required to. I would do say on both sides. Of, well, I, I like your, you know, obviously with people, yes, but also on the, you know, I'd say on the cybersecurity side of things too. You know, I mean, it's just we we got to do. We are required to do more because of the industry that we are in. Right. And the problem is that for a long time we didn't have to do anything as an industry, so we're playing catch up. We are having to follow more stringent guidelines than all of the financial in uh, subsectors in the entire country, in the entire world. But we were behind, we were on paper 15 years ago. Right. You know what I mean? Like, so not only did we have to catch up to the technological breakthrough that we've had in life 15 years in the last 15 years but now we had to accelerate that steep incline just to catch up to everybody else so it's almost like this is just repercussions of that you know this is absolutely it. repercussions of all of this right yeah. but yeah what do we do you know what i mean like this is just fact of life so we have a couple and when i look at this we've got a couple of options if i don't want to be like change and ascension and all this stuff having hipaa security problems 
I could go completely old school. This is the complete different, you know, like, let's just flip the table. I'm out of here. You know what I mean? Like, <laughs> I'm going back to paper. My older providers are going to love me for it paper. any bloody ones. Yeah, exactly. And the only thing that's going to be online then is going to be me sending the freaking scripts. And only the ones that I have to send, right? So you can the, write those uh, too. <laughs> huh? I said you can write those too. Oh, a lot oh, of states. Said. So the state of Florida won't accept right now class twos uh, if okay. they're not electronic, unless you have a very good reason, yeah, right? Yeah. So, but if I'm a practice where I have my own pharmacy, or if I'm a large enough organization or too. a large enough network, then screw it. That's an option. Flip the table and be done with it. Okay. Let's not get excited. Uh, you know, like <laughs> let's let's let cooler heads prevail, right? Let's take a look at again a co the only common factor between all of the things that we've talked about is the human element, and it's never, ever, ever going to be an executive team person. It's never going to be somebody that's making a decision, and. It's not fair to our lowest common denominator in a practice to blame them 100% of the time either because it's a bell curve, right. right? So I could honestly tell you that it, if I were to wager, a lot of these breaches are happening right now. A lot of the, well, a lot of the breaches in general in healthcare, in the healthcare industry in 2024, and you've seen this, Ray, are happening because of um, our business associates. Yeah. Not necessarily our practices directly. Awesome. That's a huge improvement over five years ago. Five years ago, it was the practices directly. We are improving. Our vendors have to catch up to us. A lot of these issues are IT based. A lot of IT companies are not used to the stringent requirements of the healthcare industry. They just wanted to break in. Cool. They just want to break into the industry and make money because now IT is hugely important in healthcare when before it was completely ignored awesome yep your mid level your and i your mid level clerical your rns your mas your front desk people your lower level billing people these are the people that are going to be most susceptible because they're the ones most likely to be multitasking and when you ask people to multitask without proper training or without proper resources mistakes are going to happen yeah, I agree. If I'm in HR, if, if I'm in administration right now, I am sitting down with my front desk people and I'm watching them just for an hour. Hey, walk me through this process. Hey, walk me through this process. And I'm just jotting down where the holes are institutionally. I'm just watching. No, I'm, you know I'm what I mean? Like, education, that's key. But it's ongoing education for me as an admin right. an executive team in the trenches do i right. have the time to do this absolutely not you're doing everything as a <laughs> but i got i've got to be i've got to plug the hole and if my biggest hole is the human element and the business associates which is the only one that i can control my, right. my people yeah. i can't control the business associate so i have a baa and if i don't have a baa get one um <laughs> right so it's, you can't get one. Use Epic Compliance. Boom. Well, I mean, if That's you we can't provide them. get one, I mean, and I'm not going to, and how can I put this? Everything is search engineable now. Is it any good? That's where that's where you have to start knowing what is needed in a company like Epic Compliance, and having a consultant is extremely nice. useful. Um, one last thing, and I, and this isn't a plug to lawyers because, I mean, lawyers are expensive. But if you have a lawyer with a finger on the pulse of the practice, it can be more economical over the long term than keeping than finding one just for a security blanket. Right. So. Let's say that someone like Sam, someone like Sam costs like 500 an hour or something like that, right? Cool. When I have an issue and I don't ever talk to her other than when I have an issue, she's going to spend four or five hours just looking up what is going on in my practice. Well, that's $2,500 gone just on her looking at 
what my practice is like before her looking at the problem. Right. But if I can negotiate with a lawyer, you know, even one that's general counsel, a uh, general business lawyer, and keep them on a low retainer, they can handle a lot of this stuff. You know what I mean? Like they can help you navigate this stuff and and change paperwork around and look at contracts. And, you know, like, so there's a lot of different things that can be done that it pushes the administrative burden off of someone like myself and people like our viewers. Now, lawyers aren't cheap, so we have to be able to negotiate. It is a negotiation. Like, hey, lawyer, I may need you for one or two hours a month. We're just putting it in the bank. You know, like maybe I'm paying you three, four hundred, five hundred dollars a month just so that way, you know, you're if something happens, I'm calling you. Yeah. And you're picking up my phone call and I don't need the nonsense. Right. Like I don't need to put a credit card on file. I don't need to do any of that nonsense. And you're already familiar with my business so we can just get to work and then maybe cheaper. You know what I mean? When we're dealing with this stuff, when we're trying to get ahead of incidents. Right. Or we're trying to review our processes and how do I get rid of this employee? Florida's an at-will state. And even still, I have to go and look and see, okay, well, can I fire this person? Well, default says Florida's at will, but you know what I mean? Like, <laughs> then we start going through, well, 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 yeah. is it really at will then? No, it's not, but they say that it is. So, I mean, <laughs> so, you know, it's, it's, it's tricky, right? And I have to prioritize. You have to prioritize as an administrator. So if I can, if I can make sure that the hurt on the back end of when one of these situations happens costs less and hurts less. Plus, right. I have the conversation on the front end with the team and say, hey guys, let's not be stupid. Right? Like, Let's just let's just not be stupid. If I have internet nowadays, there's no reason why I shouldn't be able to split my internet and you have your cell phones on your network, on on the guest network and the business, company devices are on the company network and if you must look at an emergency email, do that crap on your personal device. If it breaks your phone, it's a hell of a lot cheaper than you breaking my whole com company. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. So <laughs> I mean, a seven hundred dollar cell phone is very different than getting a fine of fifty thousand dollars just for All the day. one incident. All day. And then the lawsuits. You know what I mean? Like, and then even if the lawsuits don't come, as an admin, as an owner, you're just sitting here, like just waiting for it. You're just waiting for it because you're like, am I going to get away with this? Am I not going to get away with this? Is this going to pop up out of nowhere? four years down the road. You know what I mean? Like it's, gonna get, it's gonna, wild. Going to get that it's letter. Wild. <laughs> huh? I said, you're going to get that letter in the mail or to somebody knocking at your door. Bro, <laughs> yeah. huh. My, you're going to get served in the office for the lawsuit. Yeah. For a breach. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like it's, uh, uh, but yeah, so no, um, are all good points. Hmm. Honestly. I mean, um, Hopefully it's not too black built for everybody. I just like to I just like to be, you know, blunt and honest with you everybody. Like, hey, look, this may look crappy on the front end, but we have to be we have to be realistic with ourselves with what the worst case scenarios are so we know what we're trying to avoid. You know, so that way when we end up in a situation that looks crappy, but we look at all of the potential scenarios, this you know what I mean? Like if a breach happens and I spend, you know, a thousand dollars on my attorney to go negotiate something real quick with an with a couple of patients that something happened with a breach, but it got handled quickly, right. effectively, and we can all move the bloody hell on a lot, lot better than waiting for this to come through. And we're looking at, you know, hundreds of thousands. So anyways. So what do we got coming next week? Uh, so well, everybody's typing any questions they got. I was gonna say if you guys have any questions, please please feel free to just throw them in chat. Um, we'll, Jose and myself be uh, happy to answer. And so, Jose, I've been trying to get the uh, HIPAA compliant hosting uh, friend of mine to do a webinar, but uh, he's 
still unavailable. I'm trying to get some dates. Right, well, then up, that's fine. Next week, uh, uh, this was something that sort of came up recently, but just uh, I titled it Ensuring Workforce Compliance in a Hybrid Work Environment. So in other words, that kind of goes in with what we were just talking about. So I, that's perfect. Yeah, we can we can talk about it, at, at, you know, at the lower standpoint where you got an employee that, you know, is uh, is hybrid. You know, they're working, working from home and working in the office. Absolutely. So what, what kind of setup do they need to or even you know, mobile to even yeah. just mobile? Yes. Yeah. I mean, if you're if you're a specialty that goes to nursing homes, ALF, surgery centers, yep. I mean, they're mobile. So the second you're mobile, it means you're hybrid, basically, because you could work at least partially from home. Right. Right. So I figured we'd talk a little bit about that. That was uh, that was something cool. that a uh, customer had brought up uh, not too long ago. So um, I think that would be a good one I, to discuss. I look forward to that one because that one's that one's one that I have all the time with uh, with our clients. I mean, especially considering the fact that I, I think of my providers are hybrid. <laughs> I was going to say as well. I mean, it's it's always been around, but you know, since the COVID stuff too, I, I think it's uh, it's you know, a lot, lot more people are working from home versus uh, like, the I office, mean, or so we're working a hybrid sort of schedule. You know, so you know what's funny is if if based on the technology that we have out now, with the, all of the different ways to monitor different vitals and things like that. The only thing stopping you from being a hundred percent virtual is one, your local medical board, two, your DEA. Mm -hmm. So you're for your prescribing because they don't consider um telehealth evaluations at the same level as in-person evaluations in regards to DEA reg uh, class two meds, especially. And then your obvious um, procedures. You can't do procedures virtually right now, but sure. if it's an office code, you can do it from home. You know what I mean? Like if so, if I'm a low level pediatrician or a low level primary care, I'm not doing any procedures in office or anything like that. You could have your whole staff work from home. Oh, oh, we can staff. elaborate on that next week too. Providers, RNs, MAs. I mean, and if you're in a full risk system, I would be bloody shocked if you don't have your patients with some kind of monitoring tool, whether it's a smartwatch, whether it's um, whether it's those uh portable EKG machines that people just wear around there, you know, like the heart monitors and the and the all that stuff. Because then you just tell them, hey, what's the app tell you? What's the app tell you? You know what I mean? Like yeah. it's not hard at all. So it tracks uh, it all for you. Yeah, it tracks it all for you. Hey, what's your heart rate right now? Click the click. You know what I mean? Like <laughs> you could do so much and cover so much of the information that you need to do to build properly and provide good care. But you could do so much much of it virtually. Completely so virtually. Now we're talking telehealth again. <laughs> I mean, it's just what is the value of an office? Right. I mean, that's really what we're talking about. What is the value of commercial land, real estate? So, but we could talk about that. That's that I'm looking uh, that's a good one. Yeah, no, absolutely. And, and then um, I'll talk to Sam as well. See if we can get her back on maybe for early September and we'll go from there. Sounds good. Well, Hey, if, if anybody's if, got any suggestions, yeah. definitely, definitely feel free. Hit us up. Um, I'm looking forward to or, somebody saying something on any of our YouTube videos. Yeah, if you guys uh, have any those. compliance uh, topics you'd like us to discuss, let us know. We're we're certainly open here, and uh, um, I've sent over our YouTube channel. If you guys could please like and subscribe, that'd be awesome. And, and uh, you can check out some of more of the topics that we discussed. And uh, if you need to get a hold of us, uh, um, you guys will receive some correspondence from Jose and myself. Uh, uh, we will get this recording up on our YouTube page, usually within 24 hours. It depends on a, on the schedule, but uh, usually we can we get this up next day. You can share it to your colleagues and all that good stuff. But uh, uh, appreciate everybody's time, Jose. Yours as well. Thank you so much for your insights, Always. and uh, look forward to seeing everybody on uh, next week's session. Yep, yep. Have a good week, guys. Stay out of trouble. You too, Jose. Take care.